Today we're going to be taking a look at the Snow Bear Pro Shovel Snow Plow for two inch hitches. With the electric actuator, these are available in three sizes, starting with 82 inches wide by 19 inches tall, 84 inches wide by 22 inches tall, or 88 inches wide by 26 inches tall. Now the Snow Bear Pro Shovel Plow is going to offer complete steel construction. It's got a powder coat finish on it, so even with the salt, the snow, the ice, and things like that, this is going to last a long time. Here across the top, you do see the rubber deflector. As our snow comes up on our plow, it's going to hit that, and that's going to prevent it from coming up, hitting our windshield, and impairing our visibility. Now, for common use on concrete parking lots and driveways, you'll see the steel lip that runs all the way across the bottom here. There is a poly blade or a poly lip available. If you plan on using this for decorative concrete surfaces or even if you need to plow some snow in the lawn. Now they do not recommend the use of a snow plow, any snow plow really for that matter, in a gravel style parking lot or sand. Now another great thing about the plow is that whether it's a large crack or maybe a hole in the parking lot or maybe one of the curbs along the outside, if we do happen to hit something solid, our plow is designed to flex and absorb the energy in the springs rather than transferring it back into the vehicle. You can see that forward rocking motion is going to allow us to have a much smoother plowing experience. Now as another nice feature of the plow, we have multiple adjustable angles going both ways. It can be set to five positions. Right now we've got it set just straight flat with the front of the vehicle. Got a lever right here, we'll just pull that forward. Now we can adjust this to an 11 degree angle, both left and right. Or to a 22 degree angle, both left and right. As you can see, the plow also has a nice pivot for that uneven terrain. It's gonna slide over the road surfaces very nicely, but you're not gonna to have to worry about it digging in on one side or the other. Now we've also got a safety chain located right here. For transportation or for moving, we'll wanna bring our plow all the way up. come to the back side here we have our safety chain connection point now we want that to be as tight as possible you can simply take the pin out of our clevis there bring that up to the appropriate height we just want to keep in mind that we do still need to operate our carabiner Run that back in, still got plenty of room there. But if our main support chain were to ever fail, that's gonna pick up so our plow's not just digging down the road as we drive. Now this plow's designed for use at under 10 miles an hour in parking lots and driveways, things like that. If you do plan on driving with this down a public roadway, you wanna check your local laws. Make sure that you don't require lights to be on your plow, which some states do require that. And you'll want to make sure that they don't require a safety chain from the plow to the frame or to the receiver hitch of the truck. There are just a few little laws there you want to be sure you're in compliance with so you don't see any troubles. Now we have a worm gear driven motor that's going to give us superior strength and durability. And the nice thing about it is that it is clutched. From inside of the vehicle, we might not be able to see that that ram is fully one way or another. So in the event that we do go too far, it clutches out so we don't do any damage to the motor or the gears. It'll be a clicking noise that you'll hear. Just like that. That's protecting our motor so we don't have any issues. And then in the case of an accidental failure, our safety chain will keep that plow from going to the road. You can see that would be just like our chain coming disconnected there and it holds it nicely up off the pavement. All right, now with our plow fully lowered, we're going to remove the pin, allow these to come down, and we'll want it to be just before the lowest setting. So we're just before we make contact with the ground. We've got our pin and clip out. 
of the shank. And we'll just pull forward on the plow once we have our other side set. And it should slide right out of there for us. Now once the shank will clear the bumper of the truck, we can just tilt this forward. And it's pretty easy to slide out of the way. Now we do have an optional wheel kit that will bolt here on the side, and those wheels will rotate down. If you want it to be a little bit easier to transport, those will help with the job. We're also gonna have the nice tall red visibility markers on each edge of our plow to help us with the clearances to make sure that we can avoid any obstacles that we might come up on when plowing. Now we have skid feet here on the bottom. That's gonna protect our surfaces that we're working on from our plow just scraping right along the top. We can set this distance just by changing the two nuts that we've got here so that the very bottom edge of our plow will be just over our surface that we're plowing. Now this is, again, fully adjustable, so you can bring that as low or as high as you want. Now when we're not using our front-mounted hitch, Snow Bear's provided a cover for us. This is gonna help to keep dirt, debris, and things like that from building up in there, making it a little tougher to get connected next time. As you can see, it's got a little spring tension on the keepers there. So you just slide those in until they line up. Just like that, nice and clean, ready for next season. Now to begin our installation process, we're gonna start with the wiring side here. And I've kind of packaged this together so we really have two different leads that are coming from our kit. We're gonna have the first one. This is gonna plug directly into the motor of our plow. So it's gonna run it up and down. The second kit that I've got coming off, this is gonna be our positive lead and our two negative leads. The one with the yellow crimp is for the actual actuator itself. The one with the blue ring terminal that's crimped on there, that's gonna be for our wireless remote control. Now basically you'll see our actuator that's here. We've bundled these together. A customer requested that this be something that he can remove in the off season. He doesn't want these components staying underneath the vehicle in the Midwest all year long, only using them maybe three months out of the year. In areas that receive a lot of snow, and you might use these closer to six, seven, eight, nine months out of the year, there is a permanent bracket that you can mount anywhere on your vehicle that you'd like, as long as your power lead will reach your battery and your plow. And you'll see, got that groove right there on the back. This is just gonna slide into, and that's gonna lock in place. You could then, if you wanted, zip tie your wireless control to that and get it mounted wherever you might like. Now for our application today, just behind our battery, we're gonna have a nice kind of a pocket here. That's gonna give us a great area for our actuator and wireless control to fit in. So just gonna slide that right down and in. And then using one of the provided zip ties, we're gonna zip tie that off to one of the wire looms. All right, that's in there nice and secure. We're not gonna have to worry about it bouncing around or anything like that. But when it comes time to take it out, we simply have to just cut that one zip tie and it's gonna come out for us. All the excess wire that I had for my negative side and for the plug that from the wireless control that plugs into the actuator, I've just zip tied off there as well. Set the part connected to our battery. Stay there for a minute. Let's run this up towards the front of the vehicle. Just gonna tuck this down in behind the battery here. Keep it down there and out of the way. You see that's gonna give us the length we need to come over. We're actually running this right out from underneath our hood. Make sure it's not gonna be pinched anywhere. And we just close the hood down on top. But for our battery connections, our ground to the negative side, it's gonna be just a direct connection. And this we wanna ground directly to the battery terminal. Now with those in place, we'll just thread our nut back on and get that tightened down. Our positive side's gonna come right over here to the positive side of the battery. But here we wanna add in 
our 35 amp breaker. This breaker is going to protect the vehicle and the system from overloading. So we won't have to worry about damaging our motor or our vehicle. Now we're going to install that one right here underneath the positive side. And that breaker uses a 3-8 socket. one more zip tie just to kind of keep our wires nice and tidy here. We won't have to worry about them moving around. And at that point, we're ready to plug in our plow and get to work. Now here you'll see that solid steel shank. This is what connects our plow to our vehicle or to our front mounted receiver tube here. Now this is going to have three holes for us to select from. That's going to allow us to bring the plow back as close to the vehicle as possible. You want to get it as close as we can without it making contact. That's going to reduce a lot of the leverage out front. And it's going to help prevent some fatigue in our front end and our, and our hitch here. Now we just want to slide that in so that our pinhole that's closest to the hole is going to line up for us. And then we can get our pin slid in. Now the pin and clip are provided so you don't have to worry about having your own. Just want to slide that through and secure it with our clip. It's as simple as that. Now we'll bring our wiring from under our hood out. Slide that protective cap over. Then we can simply slide those two together. Make sure our wire's running in a clear area and shut the hood. Now we'll just pull the pin out of our support leg here. Raise those up into the highest position and resecure it with that pin. Do this on both sides and our plow will be ready for use. Now we can use our remote. I'm going to turn it on. And as you can see, it's going to lift it up nicely for us. And that's going to complete our look at the Snow Bear Pro Shovel line of snow plows for two inches. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.